Hey there, thank you for giving this video a watch. When we go outside at night and we look up at the stars, at a casual glance they don't appear to have much in the way of color. There are a few that are bright enough to trigger the cone cells in our eye which are responsible for showing color. And like Betelgeuse in Orion and Antares and Scorpio. And a few others may show hints of blue, hints of orange, but for the most part they appear generally white because it's the rod cells in our eyes that take over at night, especially as we become night adapted. And, uh, but that's not the way it works through a telescope or through a camera. And the stars come in a wide variety of colors from bluish tinged really hot stars to deep orange, almost red colored cool stars. And the way those colors are measured uh, by astronomers is using something called the BV Color Index. And that provides a standard measurement, which it dates back to the 1950s. It was first used at McDonald Observatory in Texas. And basically the stars were photographed through two different filters. One passed through blue light and the other one passed through greenish yellow light. And the photometric brightnesses of the stars were compared through the two filters and the difference is what provides this BV index. A star which shows no difference in brightness through the blue filter compared to the greenish yellow filter uh, is given an index of 0.0, .0. and that indicates a pure white star with really no coloration at all. Uh, Negative numbers mean it's a bluer star and therefore hotter. And a redder star has a positive number. And generally the numbers run from about negative 0.5 to as much as plus 5 or 6 in the case of the very reddest stars. And here is one of those cases. This is a photo taken through two different filters. On the left is through a blue filter and on the right is through a red filter and the bright star in the center of the right image is R. Leporis which is a carbon star and I'll talk more about them in a minute with a color index of nearly six which means that through a red filter as on the right the star appears nearly six magnitudes brighter than it does through the blue filter and R. Leporis in the constellation of Lepus is one of the reddest stars in the sky so for fun one evening I went out with the telescope and I panned around and recorded on video some of the different star colors. And observing ordinary stars in a telescope can be a little bit like playing uh, an old text adventure computer game. You need to engage your imagination to picture in your mind what it would be like visiting that place in person. Nowadays we've got software like Celestia and Space Engine that can make that easier and certainly more fun and I'll put some screen captures at the end of some scenes I created of the stars I'm going to show here. So I'm going to shrink this diagram down and we're going to look at some real star colors and we're just going to have a nice comparison of what you can see in the sky. And these are real video images of these stars taken through my telescope. And we'll start with some of the hottest in the sky. These are the blue B-type spectral class stars from left to right there. 59 Cygni, Alcade in the tip of the Big Dipper's handle, Zeta Draconis, and Gamma Lyrae. And they range from 10,000 Kelvin in temperature for the case of Gamma Lyrae, all the way up to 22,500 in the case of 59 Cygni. And then moving on to the A-type stars, which are a little bit wider and not quite as hot. These are the three stars in the famous Summer Triangle that can be seen pretty much worldwide. Uh, at the top we have Vega, on the left Deneb, and the lower right is Altair. And Deneb is an extremely powerful star, uh, one of the most powerful in the sky, nearly 50,000 suns in brightness, compared to Altair, which is not even as bright as Denim, but it's only one one hundredth of the distance away. So Denim is a truly powerful star. 
And then we're on to the F and G class stars. Fs are just a pale yellow, and Gs are becoming noticeably yellow. And our sun is a G-type star, very similar to Alpha Sagittae, which is the lower center star. And then we have Tau Cygni on the upper left, and Chi Draconis on the upper right. Uh, Alpha Sagittae, like I say, is the same temperature as our sun, about 5400 Kelvin, but it's a much brighter star. It's a yellow giant star. And our sun is a yellow dwarf. And to get the sun to be as dim as Alpha Sagitta is in our sky, we'd only have to move it 30 light years distance. But Sham is 300, 475 light years distance. So it is indeed a much more luminous and powerful star than the sun is. And next down the list are the orange K-type stars, of which Arcturus is probably the best known in the sky and the brightest and is visually a very different color than most of the other bright stars. Compare Arcturus to Vega when you're outside and notice the color difference. But here we've got Giant Cygni on the upper left, the beautiful double star Albirio on the upper right, with its companion star, which is a B-class star. And on the lower left, we have Theta Lyrae, and on the lower right, we have Theta Hercules, which has got the... Uh, tongue-twisting name of Rook Balgethi. And these are all classified as giant stars, although Gina Cygni, it's the brightest one in the sky, but it's also the least powerful. It's only 72 light years away. The others are between 400 and 700 away. And then we come to the reddish M-class stars. These are some of the uh, more famous stars in the sky, like Antares and Betelgeuse and Orion. Uh, but here are five other examples uh, we have from top going clockwise. We have Delta Sagitta, Gamma Sagitta, Delta II Lyrae, VV Cephei, and finally the famous Garnet Star, or Arrakis, which is also known as Mu Cephei. These are very cool stars, generally three to 4,000 Kelvin, and they're huge in the case of VV Cephei. It is one of the biggest stars in the sky probably third after the more famous V.Y. Canis Majoris and uh, U.V. Scuti. Uh, but even Arrakis is probably the size of Saturn's orbit from the center of the Sun. So it is an absolutely massive star. But, as I say, quite cool and probably only around 3500 Kelvin. But it's a long way away as well. It's almost 4000 light years. But it's such a massive star, it's a supergiant star, that it is still faintly visible to the naked eye at magnitude 5. Now if you've been looking at the chart at the top, you can see that M is the last of the spectral classes. But there are redder stars. How much redder? Well, let's take a look. These are the so-called carbon stars. They are five of the reddest stars in the sky. And they get that name because their temperatures are so cool that molecular carbon, actual elemental carbon and carbon monoxide are forming in their atmospheres. And that sooty carbon blocks out any bluish light that the star may be emitting. And so it appears even redder than its temperature would normally indicate. Uh, most of these stars are probably not much cooler than the M-type stars but the fact that they have so much carbon in their atmosphere makes them extremely red. Uh, from the top to bottom, left to right, we have La Superba, and then UX Draconis, top right, RY Draconis in the center, SS Virginis, and then T Lyrae in the lower right. And T Lyrae is nearly the reddest star, but there are a few that have even a higher color index than its 5.46, but they weren't visible at the time. And these are all huge stars, again, and most of them are quite distant from us. Temperatures are probably 2,500 to 3,000 Kelvin. Uh, but these are, these are as red as it gets, and when you look at it with your naked eye through a telescope, they stand out instantly. They're just glittering rubies compared to the rest of the background stars, even though they're not very bright. And that pretty much ends our journey through the uh, color range of the stars, from blue, bluest blue to reddest red, and so I thought I would leave off with some space engine renderings.
of what the star systems might look like if you were visiting. And I thank you for your attention. If there are any other particular stars you'd like to see a video made of or even some still shots, please let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to point the scope that way if I can see them over my roof. Thank you very much for your attention and for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.